and now maybe you can hear what I'm saying. Uh, Johnny Cash did this. It's called the Ragged Old Flag. He said, I was walking through a county courthouse square and on a park bench, an old man was sitting there. I said, your courthouse is kind of run down. He said, oh, it'll do for our little town. I said, well, your flagpole was leaned a little bit, and that's a ragged old flag you got on it. He said, have a seat. So I sat down. He said, is this the first time you've ever been to our little town? I said, I believe it is. He said, well, I don't like to brag, but we're kind of proud of that ragged old flag. So you see, we got a little hole in that flag there when Washington took it across the Delaware. It got powder burned the night that Francis Scott Key sat watching it writing, Say Can You See? Got a big rip down in New Orleans with Packingham and Jackson tugging at the scene. I almost fell at the Alamo beside the Texas flag, but it waved on low. Got cut with a sword in Chancellorsville and got cut again at Shiloh Hill. There was Robert E. Lee and Beauregard and Bragg. And the south wind blowed hard on that ragged old flag. On Flanders Hill in World War I, she got a big hole from a Bertha gun. Turned blood red in World War II. Hung low and limp a time or two. She's been to Korea and Vietnam. She's went where she was sent by her Uncle Sam. She's flown from the ships on the briny foam, and now they want us to quit waving her back here at home. In her own good land, she's been abused. She's been burnt, dishonored, denied, and refused. And the elected officials that are supposed to govern this land that she stands for is are scandalized throughout the land. She's getting threadbare and wearing a little thin, but she's still in good shape for the shape she's in. She's been through the fire before, and I believe she can take a whole lot more. So we raise her up every morning and we take her down every night. We don't let her touch the ground and we fold her up right. On second thought, I do like to brag, because I'm mighty proud of that ragged old flag. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank all the men and women that have served under this flag and died, some of them, to secure the uh, rights and, uh, that we, and, and freedom that we enjoy today. Uh, we, we said it was Father's Day also, so we wanted to present a little bit of God's Word. If you see me moving around, 
I'm I'm having to run all the controls and do this, and uh, I, I can't even do it hardly when I'm not talking. But anyway, uh, we want to. It's Father's Day, and you know, God is our heavenly Father, and at least we hope He is for you. I know He is for me, and I'm so thankful today that He provided that for us, a way to come back to a right relationship with Him. And in talking about Jesus, uh, Brother S. M. Lockridge, a dear black pastor that uh, died in the year 2000 uh, and pastored Calvary Baptist Church out in California for almost 40 years, uh, said this. He said that the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the king of the Jews. He's the king of Israel. He's the king of righteousness. He's the king of the ages. He's the king of heaven. He's the king of glory. He's the king of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. He's a sovereign king, and no means of measure can define his limitless love. He's endearingly strong. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's imperially powerful, and he's impartially merciful. He's the greatest phenomenon that's ever crossed the horizons of this world. He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled and he's unprecedented. He's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's the fundamental doctrine of true theology. He's the only one that qualifies as an all-sufficient Savior. He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the proud. He strengthens and sustains. He guards and he guides. He heals the sick. He cleanses the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He defends the feeble. He delivers the captive. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the aged, and he beautifies the meek. Do you know him? He's the key to knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's the pathway of peace. He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. And he's the gateway to glory. His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His yoke is easy. And his burden is light. I wish I could describe him as well as Brother Lockridge has. But he's indescribable. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off your hands. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. The Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. That's my father. That's my heavenly father. And I hope you know him this morning. And... Uh, he, because he, he's always been, he's always going to be, and you can trust that. He, he didn't have a predecessor. He won't have a successor. You can't impeach him, and he's not going to quit. And Jesus was back there with God in the beginning, and uh, in and back there in Genesis uh, one one, it says, "In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth." John 1, beginning in verse 1, says, In the beginning was the Word, that's Jesus Christ. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. He goes on in, in uh, Colossians 1, 16, and this may hurt somebody's feelings, said, For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him. And here's the part that may hurt some people. They were made for him, too. And so, uh, so uh, you know, some people think they're the center of the universe. But I'm sorry to tell you that it's God's. It all belongs to Him. And I see on Facebook all the time where people say, 
Well, we're all children of God. No, I'm sorry that that's not the truth. We're all His creation, but we're not all His children. You can be, and that's the good news for today. You can have God as your Heavenly Father by simply accepting the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. And it's my hope and prayer that you would do that right now. Because we don't have the promise of tomorrow. None of us may see the light of a new day. The Bible says today is the day. Now is the appointed time. And I can guarantee you on the authority of God's holy and errant word that if you will uh, open your heart and ask God to forgive you of your sin and make Him the Lord of your life, that He will do that. Because like I said earlier, He said He is faithful and just to forgive us when we ask Him. And He wants you to uh, uh, be His child. Uh, you know, God, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If God loved you so much that He didn't even withhold His Son and sent Him here to suffer more than any man, He was beat beyond recognition and suffered and died the shameful death of the cross, to take on our sin and provide us a way, then He loves you enough to forgive you when you ask Him. And He will. And uh, He's still alive. I don't care what people say. You know, Brother Lockridge also said back in the 60s, the big deal was God is dead. And he asked the question, which I love, so well, what did He die from? And who signed His death certificate? And where did they bury him? And why wasn't I notified? I'm one of the family. And uh, so now he says the big deal is not God is dead anymore. They want to know where he came from. And he said he came from nowhere. And he was speaking in Detroit one night on the existence of God and said that. And after the service, a man came up to him and said, Now, preacher, let's be reasonable. You were up there tonight and saying God came from nowhere. Now, that just doesn't make any sense. So let's just be reasonable. He said, well, Brother Lockridge said, well, if you just want to be reasonable, the reason God came from nowhere, there was nowhere to come from. And coming from nowhere, he stood on nothing because there wasn't anywhere to stand. And standing on nothing, he reached out where there wasn't anywhere to reach. And caught a hold of something when there wasn't anything to catch a hold of and took something and hung it on nothing and told it to stay there. Now you can read where God hung this world on nothing in Job 26, 7. He said, He stretched out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. And I want you to know this morning that the same God that can take nothing and make something is the same God that can take a worthless, good-for-nothing nobody and turn him into somebody that can save anybody. I've asked him to do that with me. I hope you have. You know, when I hear this, I, I think about uh, Casting Crown's song, I'm Just a Nobody, uh, trying to tell everybody. And uh, that's what we're supposed to do once we're saved. And I hear people say, well, I've got to wait till I get these things out of my life. Well, you're never going to do that. You need to get Jesus in your life, and he'll get those things out of your life. He'll clean you up. And I hope that you do that, and I hope that you've got something out of the Word of God today. You know, the Bible says that when his Word goes out, it doesn't return to him void. It always hits the mark, which is a archery term about hitting the bullseye. And uh, so when God's Word goes out, it hits the heart that he intends for it to hit. We want to thank you for being with us today. We hope we'll be back in our regular services again next Sunday. And until then, let's go to the Lord in prayer and be dismissed. Heavenly Father, we thank you today that we were able to come to your house and, and uh, proclaim your word. 
We ask you to be with all the wolves that are on our prayer list. And Lord, we want to thank you for the good fathers that we've had here on earth. And we thank you most of all for our Heavenly Father. And Lord, we just ask you to keep your hand of protection on each and every one through this next coming week and until we come back to your house again next Sunday. All these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.